Hi everybody. Um, today I just want to discuss a little bit about Brazil um, and primarily look at the economy, um, but also just look at overall what's going on um, in this amazing country. So uh, to kind of give you an overview here, uh, Brazil is the largest national economy in Latin America. It's the world's ninth largest economy, um, eighth largest in purchasing power parity. Um, and in general, it's uh, got a lot of different uh, aspects to the economy. Um, but I wanted to start with this map to kind of see, you know, what we could see about uh, just basically what Brazil looks like um, and kind of see um, kind of how that relates to the earth in particular. Um, so most of the climate of Brazil, um, if you look at North America and compare it to North America or Europe or Africa, um, Basically, it's a lot like Florida or southern United States. Um, so basically, this is the southern part of Brazil here, right? Um, and then even heading into Argentina. So, um, but up in here, it gets really wet. Um, of course, it's the jungle, and uh, you know that's a big part of the jungle there. So it's even bigger jungle than say in Africa, um, but by quite a bit, maybe three times larger. So, um, and then when you include this part, this is a lot like climate of Florida. So. Um, but basically the equator runs right through here um, and you basically have um, a lot of rain and uh, turbulent weather um, as a result. Um, so, um, but in general, this is what the climate looks like. Now, on top of this, if you, t if you phase out the climate, you can kind of see where the population is in these white areas of South America. So actually most people live in this northern part of South America up here in in say Colombia uh, and uh, Venezuela, um, but there are a lot of people that also live in Brazil as well. So basically you can see the population distribution here. So here's kind of another population density map that I like. It's a 2D, 2D map and you can kind of see. Um, so up here, there's not a whole lot of people in the Brazil, but basically, basically along the coast there is, that's where most people live um, in South America. Um, not a lot of people live in the internal part of South America. So unlike the United States, where we see a lot of people living in the internal part of the United States, it's just not the same in South America at all. Um, and you can even kind of compare that to Europe and Africa. It's one of the least populated places in the center part. It's almost like a desert in terms of people, but you can see other areas kind of compare. So maybe a little bit like rural Russia or something like that. Um, so not a whole lot of people, but when I look at Street View, you'd be really surprised. There's is quite a lot uh, going on here. So, um, but I'll just zoom in so you can kind of see what the population looks like in Rio and Sao Paulo. So these are the three main cities I would say uh, that you should know about in Brazil, um, as well as a lot of these coastal cities up along here, but at least in here, um, in this area, you can kind of see what's going on. And so I thought this was kind of a funny picture to look at. It looks like the Portuguese are on the 1500s just arriving uh, with their boats in the background here. And you can kind of see uh, they got their little rowboat pulling up. And then here's like the local native people. Um, so obviously coming from colder weather climate, um, like Portugal, not super cold, but they're wearing a lot of clothes and not so wearing, wearing so many clothes and kind of just looking at them and kind of looking at each other and <laughs> be pretty funny little meaning here. So here's another really nice map. You can kind of see what's going on in Brazil. So basically, um, if the rest of the world was going out of Europe and then they basically came down through here and then maybe along the coast and some other ways, um, they sailed down to Rio de Janeiro, which is in here, this area. Now this map shows kind of more of the main rivers in Brazil and you can kind of see some of the topography as well. So I really like it because it shows all these vines of the Amazon, not that you'd go up there, but particularly in here you can start to see what's going on with this main river here, San Francisco, um, kind of bending around and curving in. So you can see Belo Horizonte kind of being a major part of that or maybe even up in here. So there's some lakes, high mountain lakes. And this goes back into uh, some other places, which we had out in Argentina, actually. So quite a lot of uh, different ideas. So you can see even this Sao Paulo kind of even heading out here through uh, 
maybe down into Argentina as well. So, um, so basically the mountain ranges is kind of tricky here to understand, but there's basically kind of a culvert area. This whole area here drains in and is almost as quite significant uh, compared to even the Amazon. So this Ar Argentinian river is quite big here, but it's not really part of Brazil. So on this map, you can't really see it, but you can kind of see some of the drainage um, maybe from a more simplified perspective, but also detailed in some ways. So you can kind of see that this area here, but then you can see that the mountain range is in here. So Argentina actually being quite flat, except for the coastline and off into Chile. Um, and I did try to travel over to Chile. It was difficult to get there, um, but it got really fun and interesting once you got basically into the hills here. Um, but anyway, so there's a lot of mountains. Not, these aren't really mountains, I'd say more like hills. Um, I mean, you can compare that to the United States. You can see it's kind of got some pretty good sized hills on, on the coastline here, but not nearly as high as these guys over here. So I'm going to jump right into the economy here. So I took the Brazilian real, which is basically about five to one um, or four and a half to one. Um, and you can see this is kind of a live map uh, showing the price is, and I put some different markers here along the history kind of see, but right now is kind of an important time in Brazil because they're actually gaining quite a lot of value in the currency uh, going from even five or even six to one um, down to uh, about five to one or four and a half to one. Uh, but at one time, not too long ago, um, it was basically about three to one. So there's quite a difference in the currency and quite a change in what has been happening uh, over the years in the currency. So you can see that they've kind of gone through some different phases. Um, three, I'm sorry, this was the two to one back in here. So back in uh, 2014, they were doing about two to one. You can see that even did, you know, kind of changing back in 2011 even better so um, but uh, so it's important to kind of see basically where where this all might be and how the currency has kind of lost a lot of value just in a core of about 20 years um, it's amazing how fast that time can go um, so here's what the currency actually looks like down in Brazil so they got one twos fives tens twenties fifties and hundreds are the most common um, and you can kind of see what they look like. Then they're kind of a colorful currency for each kind, unlike the United States. Um, but you can say basically five to one. So this is about one dollar um, here. Um, maybe you can say one dollar here as well. The two, um, but you know, it just depends on the year and things like that. So according to most of the world, most people would say that Brazil is an agricultural country. Um, and then they also have quite a lot of minerals. You can see minerals is big, uh, and then metals and stone. Vehicles is pretty big in Brazil as well. Um, chemicals, services, textiles, machinery, and all those others. Um, but in general, agriculture is about 5% of the world's agricultural economy, which is quite huge when you think about it. So you can see that it's kind of there's a paradox here. So around 2000 is when the economy started to take off. In Brazil maybe 2002 um, and then kind of again it took off in uh, 2009 and then kind of had a peak recently here in 2011 so then maybe another taking off in 2016 and then another peak into just a couple years ago so um, but in general this is kind of what's the export side of Brazil now in terms of imports, you can see that actually Brazil has quite a lot of imports um, and that also started a little bit after. Um, so they opened up the economy and then they started to get more imports and they also got some more exports as well. So um, and maybe doing a little bit better um, in some areas, but definitely uh, stopped importing. You can see there's a big change around 2014. Now in terms of imports and exports, you can see that uh, Brazil primarily exports to the United States, and then they also export to China, and then they also uh, export a lot to Argentina, and then they also export to Germany. On the import side, if you click on imports, you can see they're importing and exporting pretty much from the same, but a little bit heavier uh, from certain places like Germany. You can see Italy shows up a little bit brighter here. India shows up as an importer, and China shows up pretty big here. Some. Um, the tree map, 
the tree map is pretty useful to look at. Let me pause this for a second. So on the tree map, you can really see that Brazil actually in this yellow area has quite a lot of agriculture and then minerals and fuels is quite large too. Uh, chemicals, vehicles being big, um, you kind of break it down into different tourism being pretty large part and so on and so. Um, I definitely recommend looking at the timeline of Brazilian history um, on Wikipedia. That way you can see current events going on. Um, that is pretty helpful. Um, just just seeing goes way, way back here. So if you want to get like the full history of everything in Brazil, you can just go on and on um, since uh, year 1000 looks like. So, but basically since the 1500s. Um, but so it's kind of just a lot of, a lot of great data here to look through. Um, anyway, I hope you really enjoyed the study of Brazil. Let me know if you got any questions. I'd love to talk about some ideas uh, in Latin America um, and just what's been going on um, for you in particular. It looks like, uh, you know, there's just a lot of different places and just different islands and just different things to check out in Latin America along the coast here. Um, and particularly even in the north side and also in the Caribbean. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. See you.